Alright, let's begin. So today we want to continue to count some things. By the way, I should have asked. I think we went through enough nice examples yesterday. You guys can get pretty good at this and leave the warm-up, I can tell, too. I'm just guessing that you didn't have a lot of issues with homework last night. It wasn't too stressful. It went pretty quick. Yeah? Hopefully that will uh, happen tonight, too. Um, so again, I'm going to give you a note sheet, and the first example is on there. And um, today we want to count some stuff, and and I won't say yet what what uh what we'll be looking at when we start. Let's just launch into this problem and see what what happens. I think this is the one that should match it right there at the top, right? How many combinations of four people? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be selected out of 26 employees, and I put a parenthetical comment here just to make this really clear. All we're looking for is four individuals. I don't care whether I get. Uh, whether I get, um, who's going to be my example? If I get Eric, Eli, Sue, and Anna, or like I want to count that any different than if I get Anna, Eli, Sue, Eric, right? You understand? Yesterday we might have counted those set that as different things, but today we want to understand that we're not like assigning them positions. It's not like I'm making Eric president, Eli vice president, Sue secretary, and Anna treasurer or whatever it is, it's like they're just going to be a committee. So the, the point we're trying to make here is that our calculation that we might have used like in the warm-up today for the second part and the calculation you were using in your homework from last night, I think we realized that 26P4 would be an overcounting of that because 26P4 is a big number, a long list of different ways of choosing from among 26 people, four people. But on that list, it includes both of the different arrangements of these guys that I mentioned, right? Along with a whole bunch of other ones. It also includes like Eli, Anna, Eric, Sue, and Sue, Eric, Anna, Eli, and right? And we don't want those all. So my question, as we did yesterday too, is we kind of keep asking this question: by how much did we overcount? What do you think? Imagine the list before your very eyes of all 26 P4 ways of choosing four from among 26 that respect the ordering. By how much have we overcounted? If, like again, we have, by how much? Four factorial. Yeah, by four factorial. It's the number of ways, how many times do they appear on the list? The answer is every arrangement of them appears on the list, doesn't it? That is, all four factorial arrangements appear on that list. All four factorial arrangements of you guys appear on that list. So we need to divide by four factorial. This shouldn't say letters, it should say people. Sorry, I gotta change the problem at one point in our lives. Um, so do you agree then, so we can adjust our calculation by just doing 26P4 divided by four factorial? And notice I'm just pulling in our definition from yesterday. I just want, at all points, I want you to understand where the numbers are coming from. So this is 26 factorial divided by 26 minus 4 factorial. Oh yeah, and then we also now have this also little added piece of 4 factorial. We're also dividing by that. And we get a number. There it is. There it is. A the number of committees that don't respect ordering for you know 26 potential employees. So we get 14,950. It's still a lot of options for us. I think you'll find as we move forward that this is the thing that happens more often. You know, like sometimes we care about the ordering. But a lot of times we're just interested in how many ways can I choose some subset of things from a set of things with, without regard to order. So in general, I should have made you come up with this, right? But just like yesterday, we said this was n factorial over n minus r factorial. Now we're just adding in one other piece. We're going to throw in a an R factorial in the denominator. So again, I, I hesitate to throw a formula up here because it should be something that every piece of which you understand completely and could need to justify and explain. Done. Do you see it? Yeah. One second till I get. Is that good? Okay. So this is so, like I just said, this will come up often enough, perhaps maybe more often than the NPR thing, that we're going to want to like take a certain number of items at a time, disregarding order, so often, that we have a name for this too. It's NCR, 
where it's called a combination instead of a perm permutation, someone might say. And on your calculator, it's available to you as well. The one we just did was what, 25P, uh, 25, 26 C4. So on your calculator, give that a try. What's up, Miss Montgomery? Did you have a visitor in here? Yeah, yeah. I would like to see her. Oh, no. She was just getting to have fun. <laughs> All right, we expect you to come back with the answers. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. All right, 26C4. Did you find that on your calculator just like you did NPR yesterday? You found that on your calculator. 26, and then go to math, PRB, number something, whatever it is. Find NCR, and then type 4. Press enter and see if you get for that particular calculation, for example, 14950. Yes? All right, just make sure your calculator is working. Okay. Uh, by the way, the other way you could write this would be NPR divided by R factorial, right? Isn't that what we said on the previous slide, too? We just want to make sure you understand the relationship between what these things calculate. And at every turn, you understand why an N factorial appears. Why an N minus R factorial appears. And now, also, why an R factorial appears. What does each one accomplish for us? Think about the way we developed the theory yesterday and now today. And then the other thing I guess we should highlight, too, is this piece here. That's actually our favorite way of writing this. Um, and the way we often read that out loud is N choose R. N choose R. All right. Now, it looks like a vector after our last unit. But there's no context. I can't even imagine really a context in which uh, you'll get those confused. I think we'll probably not be working at vectors in the same moment that we would be thinking about a combination. But that's not necessarily possible. That's not necessarily true. Could be, I guess. but. Generally, it will be pretty clear which one we mean. In this case, we mean n things taken r at a time. So the next question here we're choosing, this is not meant to be a trick question. So everyone just take five seconds to do it and then come back to us. We're just choosing three pencils. You're the winner, and I'm giving you three pencils. Pick, pick from among my 20 distinct pencils three of them. The pretty one, the red one, and the green one. Blue. The blue, the All red the one. Which three will you take? How many ways are there to do that? I'll call on someone in a second and you'll give me an answer. How about Tom? Give me, give me your answer when you get it. Um, so I said 20 factorial over 20 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial equals 1,140. 1,140. And someone out there says yes to that? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, or yeah, yeah, we can just write 22, 3, but it in fact is all that stuff. 20 factorial over 3 factorial, 17 factorial. So 20, choose 3. You know, I like the word choose because that's exactly <laughs> that, that's the way we read it in math. It's also like what we're doing. We're 20, choose 3. Right. So that one wasn't meant to be too tricky. And neither is this next one either. Have you already done it? Take five seconds to do the next one. 52 cards. Now, I didn't go out of my way to say order doesn't matter. But of course it doesn't matter. Like from your experience with decks of cards, if someone deals you like an ace, a king, a four, and a three, does it matter? You're like, oh, that's completely different than if you had dealt me the two, and then the ace, and then the king, and then the four. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter which order they come in to you. So someone answer that one for me. How about uh, Noah when you're ready? Whenever you're ready, give me your calculation and your number. Do you have a calculator? No, you have? Yeah, or no? I'll, I'll give you a second. Everyone else is talking about it. You have it? Seventy-five, like that. Seven two five. Did I get it right? Yeah. All right, and that's fifty-two. Choose four. All right, everyone else can confirm that too out there. Two hundred and seventy thousand seven hundred and twenty-five. Hopefully, you got that too. All right. Yeah. It's okay. All right. All right. Next. You have a question. So NPR is one order, it doesn't matter. Correct. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next. What up, Spades? Who's ready for that one? I'm going to call on someone there, too. Raise your 
Grace, are you ready yet? Or is it Grace? No, you. you. Yeah, you have the all four card. All four cards have to be spades, though. So how would you do that? Have you thought about it yet? No, you haven't. Have you? What is it? Thirteen something. Yeah, think about with your group. Everyone think about this one with your group, and then I'm going to come back to you in a second. I just put you on the spot. You haven't even thought about it all yet. So. Thirteen choose four. I think I like it. And that comes out to something. I don't know what, but seven fifteen. Okay. All right. So again, on every uh, as these get more complicated, I would encourage you to think about the, 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 think about it this way, right? If I actually gave you a deck of cards, what would you physically do for this particular task? Because I know some of you are thinking like hard about the fifty-two piece, but the first thing I would do if someone handed me a deck of cards is I would take all the other suits and throw them in the trash. It'd be like, because th you didn't care, right? All you wanted was spades from among those 13 spades. Like, the, wh the whole my whole world right now is just those 13 spades. There's n there is nothing else. So from those, how many ways are there to choose four? It's the same problem as the last three problems we've done. Wonderful. I think I get the picture here. This one's a little trickier, maybe. Someone have that one yet? I'll take a volunteer there. Oh, it's the same one. It's 715 again. Stephen wants this, I can tell. No, we one more time, seven. Explain yourself. Because All right, so that comes out to 2860, okay. Uh, yeah, did you hear his explanation? I mean, why does it make sense to multiply, for example? Can you explain why? I mean, think about your tree from yesterday. It's a big tree, but you'd have at the first branch, you'd have your choice of suit, and there'd be four branches. Do I want spades? Do I want art, sign, club? And once you choose that life course, then after that, you still have 715 choices, don't you? So, so it makes sense that for each, for each suit, there are 715. Anytime I can say for each, it says to me, I can multiply, maybe. So, or you could draw a tree again, you could visualize it. So that's kind of cool. Or the other way you could think about it is in terms of addition too, right? You could think uh, it's 13 choose 4. Or if it's not spades, then maybe it's hearts plus 13 choose 4. Or maybe it's diamond plus 13 choose 4 plus 13 choose 4 for clubs. Let's do the first part first on this one, next one. Just two threes. We got a five card hand. I like this whole five card hand thing. Um, still dealing with cards. How do we get exactly two threes? Implicit in that means, by exactly I mean two threes and three and three non threes, right? Like not just not just maybe threes, but like definitely two, two threes and definitely three that are not threes. Okay. So again, I would encourage you to think physically about this. Like, what would you do with the cards if I handed you a deck of cards and had you do this? Create all hands. Go. That, that you can make where they have two exactly two three. What would you do? You might, I might, start by dividing the deck into two piles from which I'm going to like source my cards. One pile will be a very small pile, just the four threes, and the other will be all the non threes. You with me? And then what would you do? You proceed to. So we're trying to do it systematically. You might from the four threes, okay, two, let's say it this way, from four, choose two, and then for each, there's the words again, for each of those, you have how many ways to choose three non-threes? Let's say it again. How many ways do we have to choose four from four, two? Well, I don't know, it's probably four, choose two, right? ways of picking from the fours to, comes out to six if you care, but whatever. 
And then, the, are, you, are we justified multiplying by the next thing we're going to say? For every set of ways we can choose two threes, we now have like, we now have for every single way to do that, all six ways, we have the task of picking three non threes. So how many non threes are there? From that pile, there you have 48 choose how many? Three. I think that's the calculation we want. Here are the threes, here are the non threes. And I think actually separating up, separating into like separate physical piles helps us visualize what we're actually doing and why we're justified in multiplying. You can draw a tree if you like. Anyway, that'll come out right. That's the first question, exactly two threes. What about at least two threes? Well, that's a hard question. I don't know the answer to that. But I did like the one we just did. I, like, I love that question. So, I don't know, let's try uh, let's try asking another question of the type I just did. How about exactly three fruits? What would that be? What's the computation for that? Four choose three from the pile of four choose three. And from the pile of non-threes choose two. How many ways are there to have a hand that has all four four, all four threes? Yeah, four choose four. That is from the pile of four threes choose uh, all of them, <coughs> and then 48 choose one, right? Now, why am I asking you this? Why, why are those interesting calculations? What are we supposed to do again? Oh yeah, that's right, we're supposed to figure out how many ways are there to get a hand of five cards with at least two threes. What am I doing to you? What do we, does this help at all? Maybe. What can you do then? Yeah, and we can add these up, right? We already did this one. And if we add these up, we can get either two threes, that satisfies the constraint, the, the requirement, or plus, we can get three threes, that satisfies the requirement, or we can get four threes, and I think we've just exhausted all the possible things we can do to satisfy the requirement. Um, and in the end, you'll get an answer, it's messy, to do that calculation maybe, um, but that is the only and the most efficient way to do that calculation actually. Mm, there might be one slightly more efficient way to do it that I can think of, but not very much, yeah. Um, could you do uh, four and then under two times 50 and three? No, and the reason is deals with something I don't want to talk a lot about yet. It's called independence. Those piles being separate was like maybe more important than you thought. You just mixed your piles. Like, what's the fi fifty? Tell me what your fifty is. It's a pile of it's a pile of threes that you all the non threes and the two threes you didn't choose. Well, that depends on the first thing you chose, doesn't it? So there's something going on there. We haven't talked about that yet, but uh, try it. Go ahead, and you'll see that you get something different than what we got. I will just pause and say, don't go hammering your calculator yet on some of these. What's four choose four? One. I mean, I'll let you do this once on your calculator. Four and tr four and press enter and see that you get one. But please don't. Need, you don't need to do that again. What about forty eight choose one? Maybe we don't need to do that one on our calculator either. What's that? Yeah. From among. Think about physically what we're asking you. From among forty eight cards, how many ways are there to pick one? Is it pretty clear that it's forty eight? You can also run the calculation and see that that's true. But um, the other one that might be clear is four choose three. What's that? Is that pretty clearly clear that that's four? Yeah. Why? Well, true, you could do the calculation, but from a standpoint of we have four threes, how many ways are there to pick three of them? Is it pretty clear that there's four ways to do that? I might say, how many ways are there, the equivalent way to ask it is, how many ways are there to leave one behind, right? And there's how many ways are there to exclude one? And there are clearly four you can exclude. So one way or another, you could come up with some of those by hand, too. Anyway. Uh, so you get some numbers here and here, great. And then someone answer this one and, and I'll give you five, sec five seconds to do this one here. I don't mean to make that one. That one's not, this is like probably one of the hardest and most interesting problems we'll do in this whole PowerPoint, okay? Not in your whole life, we'll, we'll do more exciting things in your life, I promise. And Matthew, when you're ready, I'm gonna come to you guys for the next one. Whenever, whenever you're ready. Take time. You ready for that one yet? Okay, all right, all right. Take a second. Everyone wants to work on it too.
All right, we're ready for you, Matthew, whenever you are. Have you at least gotten an inroad yet? Maybe you haven't handed anything into your calculator, but at least you have like maybe an idea of what to say. Yes. No, you're still, I'm still waiting. Great work. Good job. He's thorough, man. So for Hmong six, pick two. There's two piles, right? Again. Just like the cards. From among five, pick two. We'll call it a day. Yeah. Yeah, so again, we want to think, can we phrase it in terms of like four each? Or can we draw a tree to visualize this? And the answer to both those questions is yes. Let me, let's say it out loud. How many ways are there to pick from six men two? Are you agree that it's six twos two? Okay, and then we have, the question is why would you multiply these two? Well, for every way that you come up with to choose two, so let's pick one of those scenarios. You, you, have, you cho have you chosen your two men? Good job, all right. For that situation, for that one situation you just came up with for two men, there are five choose two ways of pairing women with that, those two men, do you agree? Okay, now let's repeat. Choose two new men. For every pair that you come up with, we can choose five, five we can do five choose two pairings with the women to go with that person. So does that make sense? For each, for each way to do the men, you can, had the women, right? So you can, once you've settled that decision. <laughs> what I, I, don't know, I wasn't watching what happened here. Is this right now? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got a pizza place here. And uh, this is a tricky problem because of the following thing I would wish to say, right? <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot to change the name up here. My apologies. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, nine toppings. Why is this tricky? Because is it clear in our minds, even though I haven't set it up there, that they're optional? It's like no one is forcing you to have all nine toppings, right? Uh, so one option would be to have no toppings. That would be not very interesting, and I think that's a great problem. It's very simple. Uh, but you can also have like five toppings, and those toppings could be like pepperoni, olives, mushrooms, whatever. Anchovies. Anchovies, green peppers, and onion or something. I don't know. Or they could be whatever. Five of the nine toppings, there are lots of ways to choose five from nine. In fact, I think I just answered that question. For five toppings, how many ways are there to do it? It was strictly five toppings. Yeah, nine choose five. I said you get to pick five out of the nine, right? Uh, Can't you do like double of some toppings? Oh, that makes it a little more complicated. Well, assume that you're not doing that. Um, but maybe, maybe one of maybe that's listed among them, Eli. Like maybe one of them is like extra cheese or something. You know what I mean? Like maybe that is one of the topping options. I don't know. All right. So I think I think we can do this. Are you ready? How many ways are there to make a topping a, a zero topping pizza? 
One way to do that. How many ways are there to make a, a one topping pizza? Nine. Nine ways of doing that. How many ways are there to make a two topping pizza? Nine shoes, two, right? How many ways are there to choose two toppings from among nine? How many ways are there to choose three toppings? Nine shoes, three. How many ways for four, five, all the way up to? You could have all nine, right? You could be that person. Okay. By the way, is this nine shoes, one? And this is nine shoes, Zero, so we could write that. This is nine choose zero all the way up through nine choose nine. And what do you get? Did anyone do it already? What did you get? Sounds familiar to me. Oh, dang it! It's nine. So yeah, there's something weird happening here. Maybe there's another way to think about this problem that's a little speedier, a little way to approach this in a different way that would confirm our answer and also maybe give us a better way to do it. You're excited about this, Stephen? Go ahead. I can tell. Oh. Listen, listen. This is going to change your life forever. Go. Uh, for each topping, you decide whether you want it or not. Okay. So, so, so wait, wait. Let me get this straight. I'm like going down the line. It's like kind of Chipotle or Subway or something. I'm going down the line. You ask me, would you like pepperoni, sir? And I say yes or no. Okay, got it. And then keep going. For each topping, there's two choices. So yes or no. Two times. And you're saying that that comes out to be the same? Yeah. Oh. I do kind of like that better. And then, of course, the question that like, is raised in my mind immediately, because I'm a curious mathematician, is like, is it always true that n choose 0 plus n choose 1 all the way up to n choose n always comes out to 2 to the n? Why should that be true? Don't you hunger for knowledge? OK, let's just leave that as like foreshadowing for the future, and we'll move on. But definitely a great way to compute this. This both work. I think we prefer the second way, though. Let's just say that. All right. We're at Urban Burger. I'm sorry, we're making you hungry today. You're trying to decide between your three favorite sandwiches. You're required to get a sandwich in this small world. You're required to get one of four sides. And you're required to get five drinks. But then I'm telling you right now that we have five optional toppings. No one's forcing you to have any of them if you don't want. Okay? So let's forget about the five toppings for now. Do you only pick one of the five? No, you can choose all of them if you like. Right? Uh, oh, okay. All right, right. Listen, listen. So if we didn't have the second part, what would it be? It would just be like your clothing problem from the warm-up day one yesterday, right? You'd have three times four times five, right? For the number of sandwiches, sides, and drinks. That'd be the number. Now, now, how do we work in the toppings, though? How do we deal with that? In light of what we just talked about. Show them you want to... Times two times two times two times two times two. Yeah, times two to the fifth. Does that make sense in light of what we just talked about? Problem done. Okay. Do you like that? Slick. You can also do times in parentheses. Uh, five two zero plus five times one plus five two two plus five two three plus five two four plus five two five. But same thing actually in the end. Again, challenge you to prove that. It'd be interesting. All right. Last problem. Let's see if we can squeeze this in here. We're forming a committee, I guess, from seven people named A through G. I ran out of creativity. Okay. <laughs> I should have included this one as one of our options. How many ways are there to do that without restriction first? Yeah, which is what? Yeah, which is what, though? How'd you compute? Oh, seven choose three. Seven choose three would be with the answer to this without any restriction. And let's just say this right now. Sorry. Um, let's, let's just make sure we understand. I haven't made it very clear in the question here, maybe. I want you to do this question, and then this question, and then this question. It's not like one question. Does that make sense? It's not like we're forming a committee where all of three of these things are simultaneously true. Does that make sense? So imagine, OK. All right, so imagine, block off the last two. Imagine we're just trying to form a committee so that B must be included. Again, piles here. Separate people into piles. Do the physical thing. Visualize it. Start to actually enumerate it. Think about it. What would you do? You would take, if you had three slots to fill, what would you do if I said B must be included? You would, from the seven people, you'd take, you'd take B, and you'd what? And you'd force B in. You'd be like, because you told me so. And then, the only really choice you have, that wasn't a choice at all, is from among the six, choose two. Done. Problem 
one, done. All right, and now, new scenario, separate, completely separate scenario. D must be excluded, new problem. How do we do that? What would you do? You take D and throw him in the trash. And then, look, he doesn't exist, so what is it? It's six people from among the only six that we have in our lives. Choose three, we have to fill all three spots. Problem th two, done. The last one's less trivial. Let's think hard about that one with your group for a second, and then we'll answer it. If you have a way to do this, I'll, I'll, I'll listen. Say you want in? So what you can do is you can separate it out and say first, so you can like say take out E and say C will be on the committee. Okay, so if C is definitely on the committee and E is not, then what is that? Six, uh, six choose two. Well, careful. No, if E isn't on the committee, sorry, six choose three. If E, you say E isn't, so then if E isn't, but C definitely is, then does C have to be? It only says that C, they're not both on the committee. All right, we'll leave that one up in the air for now. We'll answer tomorrow. There are a couple nice ways to get it. Okay, so we gotta leave some of this for Homework two tonight. Homework two will be checked on Tuesday, actually. Tomorrow's career day. Monday we're gonna turn in the IA. Is that okay? I feel like something.